Okay, peeps. So we're going to talk about Bitcoin today, some of the Bitcoin metrics, as well as the alt market and Bitcoin dominance. So with that being said, let's get it. Okay, so it's been a couple of weeks since we talked about Bitcoin. Um, we're actually not going to start out on the charts. We'll get to that last. So we're going to start out on some of the metrics first. So you guys can see that Bitcoin is currently up, or not Bitcoin, but the uh, total market cap for all of cryptocurrencies is up as of right now, 1.3%. Last seven days on CoinGecko, you guys can see Bitcoin is up 5.7%. It is currently in the middle of a breakout. So we'll go over to the crypto search term on Google Trends. As you guys can see, this is for all cryptocurrencies, not just Bitcoin. So as of right now, it's still relatively low. We're at a 16. When we were at the all-time highs, when the FOMO was at its peak, uh, we were pretty much between a 70 to 100. That's kind of what we're looking for, for a potential warning signal to get out. As of right now, I would still say we were very, very early in the Bitcoin and crypto bull run. I don't think we're even close to Bitcoin hit, hitting its all-time highs, let alone having a massive bullish alt season. I think we're pretty far away from that, as this metric indicates. It's just indicative of the fact that we're early in uh, we're early in the retail race, so to speak. So retail has not even really started jumping into crypto yet. So Bitcoin, pretty much the same thing as the uh, the crypto search term or altcoins. I guess you would call it altcoins and Bitcoin. We're sitting at a 21 currently when we were at all-time highs before. We were somewhere between a 90 to 100 and then as high as a 78. We're not even close to that right now. So again, we are early in the race in both Bitcoin and the altcoins and Ethereum. So crypto fear and greed index, you can see we're back up to 75, uh, which is quite interesting because, I mean, the, <laughs> the meter hasn't really moved. I mean, Bitcoin and altcoins have kind of just been sitting at highs. They haven't really done much. So this indicates to me a potential pullback in time, not necessarily a pullback. So there is a difference, just so you all know, a pullback in time is where the price chops sideways while the indicators reset. Whereas an actual pullback means the price action pulls back and the price of the assets go down. So I think we're in pullback in time phase, not pullback. So MVRV, uh, it is slowly moving up again. But again, I mean, these are relatively low uh, measurements compared to where we were at the peak of the cycle. We were at a seven. Uh, the second peak where we're even higher than where we are right now. And as of right now, we're not very high. So even if I were to draw a line down from this peak to this peak, we're still not probably where the peak would be, which would be somewhere around a four and a half to five. So uh, I would still still say there's a lot of room to move up here. Um, this metric is very bullish as far as I'm concerned. <clears throat> so Bitcoin rainbow chart. Um, again, I did not make this. I would not have called this a Bitcoin rainbow chart, but you know, I don't want to get into politics here. So we're pretty much still in the buy zone. We're past the halving, as you guys can see. Usually after the halving, there is some kind of chop sideways and or move down or maybe a slight markup. You can see there's like a little bump here after this halving right here. So sideways and then a bump up and then another pullback sideways and then another big move. Similar thing back here after this halving, kind of just sideways and slightly up. This halving as well, a slight bump to the upside sideways and then goes up. So what's going on right now with the price of Bitcoin, in my opinion, is completely normal and it is in line with cycle theory. So um, I would say on this chart, if we see it get somewhere probably between it, I would say the HODL territory and FOMO intensifies at that point, maybe that's a warning sign to potentially get out. Again, that's not financial advice. Uh, New bull is pretty expensive right now. We're getting close to euphoria and greed. I would say by this metric, this is actually more bearish. So theoretically, at this point in the cycle, we should be probably somewhere between hope and fear and optimism and anxiety. But because of the spot Bitcoin ETFs, this metric is a little bit jaded, in my opinion. So uh, this does not really support the pullback in time theory, more like an actual pullback. Um, theoretically, this early in the cycle, we should see some kind of pullback. But because of all the demand from institutions and banks and stuff like that, I don't think we're likely going to see that. We'll probably see more of a pullback in time than a pullback. That's just my opinion. So I'm not really expecting this metric to change that much. So Pi Cycle Top Indicator. Um, the gist of this is there's going to be bounces off the yellow EMA. As you guys can see, we're kind of getting wedged in between the yellow and the, and the green ones. 
Uh, similar things have happened before right here. Um, also right here, a very, a lot, really very much. So during 2017, we really got a lot of retest in between the yellow and eat, the green one back here. Also during 2012, 2013, we got some retests as well in between the yellow and the green. It kind of just bounces in between the two. What we're looking for is a breakout above the green EMA. If we see that, we know that there is pretty much it, it's, I'm not going to say it's guaranteed, but it's pretty much guaranteed that Bitcoin is at that point in time going into the final phase of its parabolic run. Shortly after it tops out, we should see an altcoin season. Again, we want to see a breakout above the green EMA for that to actually be confirmed. And then once Bitcoin tops out, um, the convergence of these EMAs will signal the top for Bitcoin. And that is pretty much what we're looking for there. So the Bitcoin chart, as you guys can see, um, based on the MACD here, we kind of had some bearishness, but it does look like it's mostly going sideways. Again, supports the pullback in time theory. Same thing with the RSI and the MACD. What's interesting about this is it kind of chopped, chopped sideways and went down, but then also reversed. So why did it reverse? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Number one, we said that likely it wasn't going to break this white trend line here. It's been holding forever. As you guys can see, it didn't even touch it this last time, but it held here, held here. Also, this support zone is a major support. So this support zone was previously resistance. That's something to keep an eye out for. So we weren't expecting the support to break. So it was resistance here, resistance here, flip support. That's known as a flip zone. And another indication that I think was likely that this thing was not actually going to break down is because if I go back in time here on the chart, you guys can see that every single time this thing has had a hammer candle. So a hammer candle is by definition, a small body at the top. Okay. A small body close at the top with a long wick to the downside and the wick needs to be at least two thirds of the candle. So that's what we're looking for. In this case, we got a hammer candle, boom, pop to the upside. Just so you know, a hammer, hammer candle at the bottom of a move is an extremely bullish candle. Okay. If you see a hammer candle at the bottom of the, one of these swing lows, that is a pretty, I'm not going to say hundred percent guarantee, but it's a pretty strong sign that this thing's probably going to move up. Uh, that's just a typical bullish trading candle. So hammer candle, boom, rip to the upside, another hammer candle here. Uh, there was a long wick to the upside, but I would still consider this to be a hammer candle, especially at the bottom of a move. Boom. Another big move up and see another cam hammer candle right here. So this one's less noticeable, but it is when you take a close look at it, it's obvious big move up hammer candle right here, big move up. And then what did we see again in recent weeks? Another picture perfect hammer candle and we are currently moving up. So Bitcoin is currently, as you guys can see, it is breaking this bull flag. So the bull flag target basically measured from the start of the flag which would be, I think, basically the bottom of this channel right here to the top of the flag, uh, basically reconstructed out in time. So we basically moved the pole from pretty much, again, as you guys can see the measurements right there, it's not exactly perfect, but it's pretty close to the top of the flag. We'll just take it and measure it kind of to where the breakout point is right now. You can see the target is $127,000 Bitcoin, okay? So we need to see basically the week close uh, with this green candle above this trend line here. If we get that, then that's a strong signal that we're going to get a breakout most likely. The other thing we need to see is basically a close above this trend line here, which is also potentially a resistance zone. If we get a close above the bull flag and this trend line, then I would say it's pretty much blue skies from that point. We should expect Bitcoin to go much, much higher in price. Um, where exactly? I don't know. The last measurement I could give you guys is the Fibonacci's. Um, so if I measure the Fibonacci from the previous swing high to the previous swing low, which again is the bottom of the hammer candle, you guys can see the um, the top fib up here is 131,000, which lines up almost perfectly, not quite, but almost perfectly with the bull flag target. So a lot of confluence there. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and go down to the daily time frame real quick. So you can see we actually already got two breakout candles out of this flag. So I would have to remeasure this kind of on the 
daily time frame, you can see it's not exactly broken out, but if it was measured by the weekly, this thing has actually broken out. So if I do it like this, where this wick is just poking out, you can see the candle that's currently forming right now is actually confirming a confirmation breakout of the bull flag. So um, this right here actually shows up as a hammer candle on the weekly, but you guys can see we also got a tweezer bottom here, which is a bullish sign, and then we pretty much broke out. We also kind of had this, uh, what looks to be like, in addition to the tweezer bottom, we had an inverse head and shoulders. So we did measure that. That target's right here, as you guys can see, 72,000, which is pretty much where the current price sits. So everything looks bullish. Again, we do have another bull, uh, basically a bull cross, golden cross above the break even level in the bull territory on the MACD. Also, same story with the RSI. So last thing I want to go over here is the monthly time frame. So pretty much as you guys can see, we had basically like, what is this, seven weeks of green. Last time we had this or something similar, we had six weeks of green down over here during the previous bull cycle, and we did have a massive pullback. This time, not so much, more like a pullback in time, not actually a pullback. So one solid month of red, and now we are moving up. Pretty much what we want to see here is a close on the monthly above pretty much where the current price is. So I would say if we get a close above 71500 this thing likely is going to move much, much higher. So actually one more thing before I close this out, um, just to give you guys like a total 10, 20,000 foot view so you can really understand what this looks like in the grand scheme of things. So on the yearly chart, this is pretty much what it looks like. Okay, these white lines here are the halvings. So we have one year of red, two years of green. That's not when it actually started because Bitcoin was kind of incepted back here. We're starting from this point at 2014, one year of red. That was the bear market year. Three years of green. Okay, that was the bull market year is the three years of green. The re basically the recovery year, the halving year, as you guys can see here, and then the actual bull run year, which... At this current point in time, this is the halving year. Last year was the recovery year. Theoretically, next year will be the bull market year. Again, we have elections coming up this year. Um, the Fed at some point later this year is ideally supposed to be cutting rates, going back to QE, which is very bullish for next year. And next year would also be technically the bull market year for Bitcoin and altcoins, so it lines up perfectly. So again, one red year, three green years, one red year. And then we have two years right here of green. We're currently in the having year. Next year should also be green. There is actually one more thing I wanted to cover with you guys before we close out the channel, and that is the Bitcoin dominance. I actually can't show you guys this on the <laughs> yearly chart because it's not going to be so obvious. But if I kind of zoom out here, you guys can see what's really going on here. So... We were in this rising wedge on the Bitcoin dominance. As long as the Bitcoin dominance is going up, Bitcoin dominates the market. It's literally exactly what it sounds like, which means that all coins are going to bleed against Bitcoin. However, when the Bitcoin dominance goes down, Bitcoin bleeds into all coins. What does this mean? I know it sounds bad, but basically what happens is money flows out of Bitcoin into all coins. That's what we see when the Bitcoin dominance drops and we are heavily positioned in altcoins. So that would be a very good thing for us and pretty much anybody else that is too. The rising wedge by nature is a bearish pattern. Okay. So we are expecting a breakdown out of this. We got it right here and we're kind of retesting these EMAs. Uh, theoretically, we should see a drop. I don't know if that's going to happen, but as of right now, um, we did get a break, uh, a basically a candle close below the wedge, if I go back here, once again, you guys can see that this is literally perfectly aligned and we finally got a red candle below it. So the last thing that we're looking for is a candle close below this resistance zone and then below the EMAs and that would confirm alt season. Okay. So we saw a different pattern last time alt season happened. It was actually a rising broadening wedge, which again is also a bearish pattern. It's just a different kind of pattern. So once we got a close below it right here, we kind of retested for a little while and then sold off. We're kind of seeing something similar here. So we got a breakdown, kind of chopping sideways, like this thing chopped sideways for what looks like to be about two months or so before selling off. We're currently seeing something similar. Um, 
I'm still of the opinion that Bitcoin's not going to hit all-time highs probably until closer to the end of the year. And then we'll see an all-season somewhere around Q1 of next year, but we'll just have to wait and see how that happens as of right now. Uh, it looks like Bitcoin dominance wants to break down. So we saw this breakdown out of the broadening rising wedge and then an, just an absolute capitulation of the Bitcoin dominance, which led to a massive, huge all season. So anyways, this is uh, Bitcoin and the Bitcoin indicators as well as the altcoin indicators like Bitcoin dominance. Hope you all enjoyed this content. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you all later. Peace.